Hello and welcome. This is week 11 of my return to the violin. This is my practice routine. Uh, so first thing I do is just warm up. And when I'm warming up, I'm trying to warm up my fingers and my wrist for the bow hand. Um, I'm trying to really listen to my intonation and where my fingers are. I am trying to be very cognizant of where my elbow is and my wrist and what my wrist is doing in relationship to my bow hand. Um, I'm also trying to be aware of where my bow is at at any given point um, and practicing rolling the bow like when it's towards the frog I tilt it towards me and when it's at the tip I flatten it out a little bit. Um, just little things like that. So I do some finger exercises, some bowing exercises, and of course my scales. And then after I feel like I've properly warmed up my fingers and my body and my violin, I move on to my vibrato exercises, which are whatever my teacher has had me do for the week. Um, and sometimes it extends over weeks um, just because vibrato is a really difficult thing to learn. So we're working specifically on wrist vibrato. And right now we're at a point of doing exercises to increase vibrating speed and also to um, create continuous vibrato. So that's what I'm working on right now, ascending and descending, and um, it doesn't sound that great. And uh, there's a long way to go, of course, but I've actually seen, seen a lot of growth and I can control my vibrato a little bit more. And so I'm, I'm really grateful. This, these exercises that she's given me have been really helpful. This is also usually the point in which my dog leaves the room. He's usually pretty good just listening in to me practice, <laughs> but it's when I start working on the vibrato that he's like, nope, I don't, I don't wanna listen to this. And I can't say I blame him. And I should add that usually I do this in front of a mirror. I do my warm up in front of a mirror as well. Um, but this time I'm actually using the camera. Next up is working on these etudes for third position specifically. Uh, so there's three of them that I'm working on right now. The third one is brand new. I just started working on this yesterday. And so <laughs> I'm in the process of figuring out what the notes are and it's a little tricky and I'm doing the best that I can. It doesn't sound good, so <laughs> I apologize for that, um, but it is part of the process, so I figured I should just share with you where I'm at.
yeah, messed up a little bit there at the end. So here is the new one that I am working on or trying to figure out for on day two with this. Um, it's a little bit tricky and I have to take pause and figure out where my fingers are and what notes that I'm playing and um, check my intonation with another string often, uh, which is really helpful. My teacher does not want me to write out the fingering. Um, she doesn't, so she actually doesn't share it with me. She plays it briefly in her lesson, um, but she wants me to listen for it because she doesn't want me to read the numbers. She wants me to read the notes, which does make it harder, but in the long run, I know I will greatly appreciate it because there will be, come a day when I open up a new book and it will have all these notes on ledger lines and no fingering. So I'll have to figure out the notes and the fingering myself. And so it will be really helpful. So I spent a great deal of time on that last exercise. And in the end, I figured out the notes, which I'm thankful for, but they are certainly not in my heart yet. <laughs> They're not in my body yet. So tomorrow I'll spend a lot more time with it, of course. Um, but I realized it's important, this is just as important to add into your routine as all the other things, and that is to stretch. Um, as we are practicing, and especially when we're super concentrated, our bodies tend to get really tense. Uh, and it's important to get that out and prevent injury, because that's a thing that happens. And uh, especially when you're practicing a lot. I experienced that with the cello. I got like tennis elbow because I would practice for hours a day and never take pause and never take the time to stretch. Um, so I'm trying to do that, um, be much more deliberate and intentional and get that, pra that stretching in my practice. So anyways, the next thing that I'm working on is this etude. This is number 29 from Wolfhart. Uh, I forget which book it is, but it's one of his violin studies, of course. And this one is all about slurs, bow crossings, and she wants me to also try to incorporate a vibrato for the, qu the quarter notes. And so I'm doing my vibrato really slow and deliberate because I'm trying to make sure that I get it in my, my body to do the elbow vibrato, which is what we've been working on. Um, when I lose control over it or get sloppy or careless or try to speed it up, I tend to use my wrist. And so I'm trying to break that habit and really develop this elbow bravado before I can do any other type of vibrating. So that's what I'm doing here. It doesn't sound great, but this, this etude I've been working on for a little while now and it's come a long way. <laughs> this has been very challenging with all the bow crossings and the slurs. So yeah. It may not sound like much, but just just trust me on that. It's come a long way. And now for the final portion of my routine, and that is my repertoire piece, which for now is Umarosk by Dvorak. And we are in the stage 
uh, one of the final stages, basically. Well, actually, it is the final stage. Um, <laughs> and that is incorporating the musicality. That is working on and trying to figure out the phrasing. So this is my favorite part of learning a piece. After all of the notes are figured out and the bowing and the technical parts, um, is to try to bring it to life and make it your own. And so one of the things that I'm doing as a part of this process has been to listen to as many recordings, um, not just on the violin, but on the piano, which is what it was originally written for, uh, on the cello, other, you know, other instruments, and try to find my favorite interpretations and then pull from those what I like and try to imply, um, apply it and turn it into my own Alicia's version of Humorosque. Uh, and that's just really fun. And it's hard to really express all of these things as a beginner um, because some of the things that you have to do are really subtle or I haven't learned them yet. And so dynamic changes and just little variations, they probably don't come through as clearly as I hear them in my head. Um, but that will develop over the years of practicing. So this is just where, where I'm at and what I'm doing. Um, and so there's a couple times where I'll like play a measure over a couple of times just to get, like, how do I want that to sound? Um, and maybe you won't hear a difference, but I feel a difference. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. Um, anyways, thank you all for watching. I'm going to go ahead and sign off and just let this video run out. I will see you in the next one. Bye.